Q&A function, but feel free to also use the chat. I'll be looking at both, but any direct questions that you absolutely want me to ask them, please use the Q&A so I don't get lost in the chat. Where's everybody watching from? Please let us know in the chat. I see a lot of people from LA, New York. Welcome everybody, welcome to Lightbox. Portugal. Where are you guys signing on from? Drawing Wild Black Folk. I, yes. I know it's in, it's in Burbank. Burbank. Where's Burbank. Where's everybody from? Yeah. Oh, Burbank. Texas. Dallas. <laughs> Dallas, Texas. Yeah. It's hot as hell down here. <laughs> well, it's the last bit of summer. I know. I think I, oh, it's just so <laughs> hot. Can it stop, please? I mean, sometimes like it'll it'll let up when it starts raining, and I'm like, yes, peace. But then it comes back, and it's like, I guess I'll suffer again. See, there's no rain here. I just want to rain already, just for the fires to just calm down. <laughs> it needs to rain. Yeah, yeah it looks crazy year. over there. Yeah. Oof. But we're still having a fun time in quarantine. Just working, Fine. thriving, I guess, the best we can. <laughs> All righty, well, I'm going to ask my team to please go ahead and let's kick off this intro, please. And for everybody watching us, we have an exclusive offer during Lightbox, 10% off of the Mobile Studio Pro using the Lightbox 2020 code. You can find this at our e-store. It's a limited time offer for the US only. And this is one of my favorite products. Mobile Studio Pro lets you get creative anywhere. Check it out. Right on. Okay, so we're ready to get started. For everybody wondering where they can find out more about Drawing Well Black, we're going to be answering all these questions later. I know that we already have a few in the Q&A. Please um, also take note of everyone's Instagram handles displayed at the bottom so that you can directly ask them any specific questions you may have. Welcome everybody. Hello, Abel. Hi. Hello, Hello Mariama. Hi. Hey. How uh, have you guys been checking out any Lightbox panels yet? Is this your first one? This um, is my first one. Yeah. I forgot yesterday. Um, I went for the multi artist drawing one yesterday at eight o'clock late at night because I'm in Atlanta, so it was like midnight here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's get some basics down because I'm very familiar with Drawing Well Black because I've been following the hashtag for, for some time now. But I really wanted to bring all of you here um, to talk about Drawing Well Black to people who may not have heard of it and people who may want to support it. So why don't you guys start by telling us a little bit, first of all, about you individually and how you joined uh, Drawing Well Black. I guess I can yeah, um, so I'm Abel Hayford, um, I use data and pronouns, I'm an illustrator, um, color designer, based in LA, um, just recently graduated from MICA as an illustration major, um, so that's really exciting, um, so yeah, I started organizing Draw Our Black in September um, of 2017 as kind of a response to just like, um, a visual woman, which is another hashtag promoting white women artists in the industry. And I was um, finishing up an internship at Warner, not finishing up, I was um, doing an internship at Warner Brothers for the past four years. And I, um, and I, while I was in my time, I think one thing I noticed, I was like, I was the only black person on my crew. I was like, where's, where's everyone at? Like, I was like, it's kind of that feeling like being like, 
lonely and like not feel like not having people around that you can relate to and stuff and I also felt that way with my because I finished up my first year of art school and like there wasn't a lot of black artists in my major in illustration and I was just like well I need I, I wish I could find a way to like connect with other black artists beyond like where like local and where I'm locally at and so I was like well this a woman was able to connect all these women artists like maybe I could maybe I could start something that connects and promotes black artists on Twitter and Instagram and like I was just media. So of course I started drama black um, that year and it basically did, it just became its own thing, you know. Um, I now like I have such a big network of like friends and like other artists who I be able to connect with and like um, just talk to and like also just promote their work because there's so many amazing artists in our community that I feel that why like why are we why weren't they getting attention before like i'm glad that this hashtag was able to give the attention that they deserve and hopefully employ them <clears throat> money is important you know but i i'm so great thankful for what it has become yeah thank you abel you've done great and uh yes when i first reached out to you I had no idea what what's you know the, the history of the motivation became drawing well black but i like what what i saw it was your own community because your Cintiq broke. And they. I woke up one morning with thousands and thousands of messages from your community, uh, urging Wacom to look at you and say, and, and help you. And it was literally your community, uh, the same drawing black community, uh, just shining the radar on you and shining the radar on each other. And I think it's beautiful. Thank you. Um, let's hear from Manny. How did you get started on drawing well black? And, where are you from? What's your specialty? Let us know a little bit more about you. Hi, uh, I'm Manny, as you know. Um, I started, well, I guess as a little background, um, I'm a biz dev artist. Um, I mostly do character design. Um, and I graduated from UT Dallas, like, I think two months ago now, which is, like, wild. Like, I'm actually done with college. It's crazy. Um, <laughs> but anyway, yeah. But hi to UT Dallas people in chat if you're there. Um, and I started posting on Twitter, like, in 2017, and at that time was when I saw the Drawing While Black hashtag, I was like, oh, this is cool, and I thought it was, like, a really interesting way to, like, spotlight Black artists, like, it makes you really feel less, like, alone, because, like, growing up, I didn't really see, like, a lot of, like, Black artists, especially since, like, I'm Nigerian, and, like, it's not, like, it's not often I see, like, other African people, like, doing that stuff, so it's, like, I don't know it's it's such an interesting opportunity to kind of like be part of that community of people who kind of like look like you and like relate to you and like um and have the same kind of like uh what's the word like oh but yeah background background is you yeah and uh from that hashtag I met like so many cool like other black creatives and like without it I don't even know if we would have ever met so it's been super positive in my life and I'm really grateful for it Thank you, Manny. We're glad you're here. What about you, Umaima? Let us know how you got started in Drawing Well Black and a little bit of uh, your artistic background. Um, hi. So just like Manny, I'm also Nigerian. And I actually came to the US four years ago just to attend art school. So the same thing. I wasn't, honestly, I wasn't really drawing a lot of Black characters to start off. Then um, my dad called me out on it. So I was like, okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I feel like, okay, so yeah, true. I'll, so true. I'm like, okay, I'll draw characters that look like me. Are you happy? And then when I started doing that, you know, that also actually is like a therapeutic thing for you because you are only seeing like one type of character is beautiful. And that's why you were drawing that. But from doing that, I was like, oh, you know what? I love this. So it just <laughs> went from that. And um, I started posting my artwork online, mostly on Twitter, but at the time I was still learning how to draw anatomy. It was a tragedy. So <laughs> it was, you know, anatomy I was just going so along wild. with it. Exactly. But eventually as my art continued to grow, Abel also just came in, created this tag where we will all come together. And I was also seeing other black artists that were doing such like amazing things. So that, just pushed me more to like you know fall in love with even my own art on its own and yeah and <laughs> that's how it came to be 
Thank you. And last but not least, Mariama, tell us about you and how you joined Drawing Well Black and how it's helped you. Um, so my name is Mari and um, I'm a self-taught artist and I moved to Los Angeles to do animation um, like back in 2014. Um, and I kind of like noticed like it wasn't like animation was great and there's a lot of cool people, but it wasn't very diverse, especially in the workplace, um, which was very frustrating because there's just there's just a camaraderie that you don't have. Um, and so I think like, I don't know, I was a little tired <laughs> about it. I was like, man, I hope I wish somebody would just like <laughs> make a meetup or something. I'm like, it can't just be like me and like a few other people that are black in animation. Um, and then seeing the drawing while black um, hashtag, I started finding some of the artists. I'm like, wait, you're in LA too? <laughs> like, how come I haven't seen you at any of these meetups? Uh, or there would be like people who were like, oh, I'm thinking about coming out to LA to do animation. And it was just really cool to kind of like connect with more black artists and have that experience and share with each other and just be like, um, kind of just share our experience being in this industry. Um, and I really appreciate the hashtag because like I found a lot of amazing artists through it, so. Thank you, everyone. So it sounds like the, the main goal of Drawing While Black hashtag was A, to build a community that was visible to each other in the world, easy to identify, and B, to share experiences, right, to, to see Say, this is happening to me, who else is it happening to? This is not a, we are not alone. And also we can do something about it. Is that so, Abel? Would mm -hmm. you say the main two goals? Yeah, I think that's main, the um, main objective for Drama of Black is this to like show the visibility of like Black artists in um, different industries and stuff. And just also just like having that camaraderie of just like having like similar backgrounds and experiences. Also too, I think it was kind of like a, like a like a not like a call out to like studios but just like you guys don't have any excuse not to hire black people like you have so many talented people who are black like you need to put more effort I like I that's why I started the directory because it's like I it's like lists it's like because it's like oh we can't find information here's the information to contact all these artists like this should not be an excuse to not hire black artists you can't blame it on talent because we the talent's there and just not even that, just that hiring, having like a safe environment where you can have these black artists in these studios. Cause it's nice to like have a job, you know, represent our community, but it's like, what's the, like, don't put us in toxic environments where racism thrives in them, you know? Because I hear, hearing stories too, a lot of people in our community um, share their stories about how they had faced prejudice, stereotypes, discrimination, pay, um, unpaid, pay pair, um, unpaid, um, unfair wages and stuff and having that platform to be able to voice those experiences and share our testimonies. I think that's very important. Let studios know that yes, like recognize us, but also recognize yourself in this um, in this fight for like anti-racism um, initiatives because you like you have so much power to change the environment. Like you like draw them all black. We're here and what, like we already have such a strong community, strong support group. Now it's your turn to put the effort that we have been putting in for such a long time, you know? Absolutely. I, I did find the directory very useful in my own search as a community manager for Wacom when I look for new talent. Um, obviously, like you say, it's just an excuse because anybody can just go to Instagram and also just use those hashtags there. Uh, but it's so nice that and very thoughtful that you created this directory so that there's no more excuses. Um, tell us a little bit about the directory and anybody can answer this because I know that all of you work on it. Um, how does one join the, the directory and who curates it? What's, what are some of the requisites or rules um, to be included in the directory? Yeah. So uh, actually I'm like, I'm like the main person running for the directory and stuff. Um, <laughs> So basically, um, you, you just have to fill out this form um, through Airtable. Um, it's on my um, Twitter. 
I'll probably link it up um, later again just to remind people, but you fill out this form with all your information, like your name, um, if you're a student, where you're from. It, it basically lists everything that needs to be contacted in. Um, because of Airtable, um, before it was like Google Drive, so I would have to manually put in people's data, but Airtable is really great because it's like, it automatically puts you in the directory. So it's like, just fill it out and like you're good and if you need to update your information just need you just have to fill it out again and I just have to go back and um just update it myself it doesn't take a long time so it's very like self it's very like self-efficient where it's just like you put in your information it's there so no waiting it's just it's really easy and um if you are trying to hire um hire people um through the directory um there's another form where you apply to access it for the password. Um, it was public before, but there's instances of like just misusage of the directory. So um, I had to privatize it just for that sake, uh, but it's been good, doing good so far. A lot of um, studios and recruiters have contacted me for the password. And um, it's nice because I know who's looking at the directory and who they're hiring for it. That's wonderful. So in terms of uh, prerequisites, like do you do you have do you include artists from all disciplines? Are they from America or are you including black artists from outside of the US as well? Yeah, every if you're black, you can be part of this directory. There's no um like if you're black and you're working or just like a student, like you are part of the directory. So there's a bunch of people from different countries, like you got Nigeria, Ghana, um, people in the UK, Canada, Mexico, um, like anyone, if you identify as black or makes, um, you you can enter the directory. So it's, it's very, it's just very accessible that way. And for all industries um, related to art, even writing, I include um, animation writing and like comic writing, also just like writing involving art. Um, also web um, design, also um, teaching and art education, because that's like really important is having like black people in art education because it's like, this is the next, you teach the next generation of artists, you know? So it's like, I tried to, um, I'm always open to adding more and more categories to the directory. Thank you. I'm gonna go to the Q and A because it's a really interesting question here. And I wanna start asking some of these questions. Um, Ubong says, this may be heavy out of the gate, but I wanted to know how you navigate being vocal about feelings and opinions concerning treatment of Black people in the industry. Navigating feelings, or actually not navigating being vocal about the feelings and opinions that you have. Some people may be very receptive to those comments. Maybe some people are very Defensive, how how does drawing well black not navigate that? I guess I'll well, I'm pretty new to the industry, so I don't have any personal experiences yet, but I do my best to like signal boost or like kind of like be there to like use my platform to kind of like give a platform to people who have like serious issues, um, if nothing else, because that's kind of the least I can do, you know. Thank you, Manny. What about you, um, Mari? Do you how how do you deal uh, or when you have have strong opinions? How do you decide uh, which ones to share online, which ones to share more privately? Um, I know that a big part of drawing well black is advocacy, so you have to be outspoken. Um, so this is when that private account comes in handy, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> there are times like, especially when certain things keep happening and happening, you just want to have your own private space where you can be like, oh, then when you're calm, then you can go to the public space where you can calmly talk about <laughs> why this certain thing is harmful or why <laughs> this um, certain new conversation people are having is harmful to like the black community. So, mm -hmm. and all that is about, you know, the whole concept of professionalism and all. So you have to keep on suppressing that emotion. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I feel like it's not, it, it's not healthy, you know, <laughs> but like at the same time, you're just always worried about how people will view you, especially because you're trying to also get into the industry, you know? 
that's yeah. a problem. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it's just about knowing the right spaces to kind of let out that emotion and then going like, okay, now I'm going to talk about this in a proper way where people yeah. will actually understand me and not just judge it based off me being aimlessly angry. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, like just to like jump on that too, like my privates, like I'm very uncomfortable <laughs> private. <laughs> Oh and I, it's kind of like my rough draft like I'm gonna go off but then I'm like okay now it's time for me to be professional and I go on my way and I'm like so this is why you should not be racist and like just ex- share my experiences and just like dealing with just like some things I have dealt with um like being a freelancer like I don't really have as much interactions and um with like my like employees um when I was working at Warren Bros I didn't have like a lot of ins- experiences um however I have had experience trying to get positions and them lowballing me and thinking because I'm a student and young and black they could take advantage of that but I'm not the one to <laughs> take advantage of and I have been vocal I have been I politely tell them why I need um to be paid a certain rate and some are like yes you understand some are very hostile and um and this is a recent experience where someone was very hostile and I try to be as professional as I can and of course I contacted the union in the midst of it um because I d- I knew I knew the pattern of some employees underpaying low-balling black artists um especially on directory um because it's like, well, you have this opportunity, we can take advantage of that, you know, we can take advantage of you, you know. Um, and because you have quote unquote unexperience, you don't know that we're taking advantage of you. And I don't want to tolerate that, you know, it's just like, I, again, like we appreciate any opportunity that comes our way, but we're not going to take, like treat us with respect as you would t- treat our white counterparts, you know, like give us that respect, you know, cause we're not, begging like we're not begging you like we're not going to beg for you to treat us with respect you know and I think that's why it's very um it's such a battle when you are vocal because like some employers like they're like oh we like how vocal you are but someone like this person might cause a problem in our company if we Mm -hmm. fuck up you know (laughs) excuse the language but (laughs) so it's a constant battle of like what you should say and how you should say it I kind of, mm-hmm. I think for me, I established that I'm going to be professionally vocal as much as I can, because it's like, again, I'm organizing this like hashtag for like black artists. So if there's a problem or like an issue going on, I feel like I have an obligation to address it, you know, but other black artists don't have that luxury because it's just like, they, they always got that risk of like losing something, you know, I don't want, I don't want that any opportunity to be lost by anyone, you know, but it's like, Again, it's just like, how can we fight racism, you know? Like, how can we fight all what's going on, especially right now? Like, this is such a traumatic time in our lives, you know? So it's just like, unspoken, like, I always tell myself, or at least tell ours, like, our vocalizing our, like, struggles, our trauma and stuff should not be held against us, you know? Our pain should not be held against us in any type of way. And I don't want that to be, I really think that, people who are professional like should realize that like pain like should not always be hidden you know because like again like vocalizing our pain like we can find people who relate to us you know like I also feel this way I also feel this way you know like testimonials are just so important for just moving forward you know so I think again like feel comfortable like what you feel comfortable voicing but also like don't think that because you say something's going to blacklist you because one, it's not always true, and two, like, why would you want to work at a company that is actively racist? Very good point. Very good point, Abel. I just want to say that in the chat, all I hear is big, big words of support and very thankful crowd because of all your hard work, all of you, Abel, they're saying, preach, preach, keep up the good work. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. We have a lot of people in the chat that maybe are following you or are very aware of your work and just very, very thankful. Um, So we already talked about voicing opinions. Now we have some questions here. Um, 
specific to social media. Have you found a specific platform to be more hostile than others, say Twitter versus Facebook versus Instagram? Like, question for all of you. Oh my God. Like, Facebook. Because ba- everybody's racist cousin just comes up, like, who are you? And you're they're just oh, like, you? well, I think, like, <laughs> who, who? I just, it's easier to mix different social groups with Facebook. And then I guess Twitter. Like Twitter is just crazy in general. (laughs) And the thing is, is like, I'm kind of like privileged because I haven't gotten into like any weird interactions yet. So like, I don't know, they've all been chill so far, but Twitter is the one that like, when I think like crazy apps, like I think Twitter. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) it's true. Twitter. Twitter. Well, um, I found, I know that Twitter, you know, it's it's toxic sometimes, but I did find you guys through Twitter. So yeah. it's also a great yeah. place to make connections. Yeah. I think it's a I really think good when, yeah. right. Oh, what were you saying, Mari? Oh, it's, I think it's a good place to people put their opinion. And whether it's a good opinion or a bad one, or I think that's, yeah, like it's it's easy mm-hmm. to find any kind of opinion on there. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think for Twitter, it really just depends on like who you're following, who they're following to. Um, I, ugh. I'm surprised of like how like le- I don't get as much hate as like or like a lot of attacks on me, which is like fortunate. But I know other artists, that's not always the case, and I hate that's not always the case, you know. Um, and like it really does depend on like. And who's in your Twitter group, you know? Twitter itself is just always constantly, everyone's talking, especially with quarantine. Like, everyone has something to say <laughs> now, you know? And, like, it could be a good thing again. It could be a bad thing. But like, people are talking a lot more mm-hmm. than... It's, it's like, damn, I thought everyone should be working right now. But I guess... <laughs> Anyone? It's like, what are y'all doing? And then we realize we're at home. It's like, no wonder y'all are talking shit constantly. It's fine. The, the app's always on fire. Yeah. yeah. Like, I know how I always be talking on Twitter, but I'm also working too, multitasking and stuff, but I, I'm talking good shit. But, <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> but so other people um, really are spending their time in quarantine saying anything, you know? And they can say it, you know, but all people can reply if they want to. Mm. And also treat if they want to. Um, yeah. But I, yeah. I, I, I like love Instagram the block button. Yeah. yeah. The block I, lo- I love <laughs> scrolling past. I see a take and I'm just like, okay, that's kind of dumb. <laughs> so I scroll past yeah. it. And I love the block. Yeah. I, I don't I don't like arguing on Twitter. If you're going to come and talk to me crazy. Oh, me neither. Straight no, up. I refuse. I'm not either. talking to you. No. It's like the I don't thing, have time to argue with you. No. The thing is, I could like, see the change, right? Like, because, like I was saying, my followers went quite high at a small amount of time, and it was wild for me because I didn't have enough a lot of followers then. And anyone that says anything, I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna come at you too. But as soon as I hit like the 10k mark, it was this moment of. If you're gonna keep doing this, you grow old doing this. Because yeah. every day is like someone new in your mentions, in your yeah. messages, in your emails, because you know you have it up on your bio for professional. Yeah. So I just had to like really mm-hmm. shut down my emotions, unfortunately, and pretend yeah. what I'm seeing is not in real life. You know, just close your eyes, block them, and yeah. yeah. It's so true. Like- I don't even give people the satisfaction of getting blocked. Like, I've had some, like, kind of, like, dumb comments before, and it's just, like, man, anyways, just keep (laughs) scrolling. Because it's, like, what can you say to that? Like, what can you, like, you're really, like, invested in saying stuff. I'm just, like, eh, I guess. You're probably right, probably wrong. I don't know. I don't care. (laughs) It's, like, uh, anyways, like, I'm just, uh, I'm going to close my eyes. I pretend not to see it, you know? (laughs) I don't see. I don't see. (laughs) But... I do know some some people in the comics like they kind of do take care of like trolls or like haters mm-hmm. or like people being annoying. They oh yeah, 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 yeah. And, and it's like I must leave you to them, you know. Yeah. And I want to worry about something else because yeah. 
I don't want to give you my time right now. Like, you're mm-hmm. not worth investing. But- yeah, that's like the negative part, of course. But like, like she, you know, she was saying that she saw me on Twitter. It's like, that's the main platform I have. And honestly, yeah. I've met so many amazing people. All of you, I met all of you. <laughs> like, I also yeah. your accounts on Twitter. Like, you know, so there is that part. And of course, at a point, the hate does get less than like, the positive you get but the hate is just can get so strong sometimes you know you can go to bed with it and it's just so easy to kind of focus on that but mm-hmm. you, you, know, you keep talking to yourself like no you have these amazing group of friends yeah that are still being so lovely to you and I think that's mm. just the only way to keep surviving because every yeah. day I'm like I could just deactivate and go to bed <laughs> but I need a job <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah no, uh, I definitely, I, that's why I'm really thankful to this community because it's like someone's anger is like everyone's anger, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's just nice to have people. It's like nice not to feel crazy because it's like, oh, is this, is this racist? And everyone's like, yes, it is racist. So it's like, it's nice to have yeah. someone like not to be alone when you are like facing things like hate on like online. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I'm really, Twitter is like, like such a main platform for drama on Black. So it's like, it's like it's kind of an essay evil um but it's still so great to connect with so many people on that platform also um that's why i also sometimes go to instagram because that's minimal contact with people post and leave oh right Instagram really is like you just post and go like yeah i I like i love instagram way more than twitter because i think it's just more fun to use like i can just post Mm -hmm. a picture and like talk shit in my comments it's so fun (laughs) hearing people's comments so funny Twitter is like yeah. open. It feels more in a weird way, like kind of open to the rest of the world. And like, ew, interacting with yeah. random people, gross. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. It's just a different mindset, I guess. Maybe because I've been mm-hmm. on Instagram longer. Well, uh, half of it's such a different mindset. Hmm? We have a lot of Twitter people in the chat, and they feel oh. the same way. You guys, a lot of people are saying they don't engage; they just block. But a few of them are agreeing, you know, that like Abel said, somebody's anger is everybody's anger and it's a good place to support each other. Uh, mm-hmm. Interesting what you say, Manny, that Twitter, you feel more exposed because it, anybody can, even non-followers can find you through a hashtag. Yeah, it's, yeah. Just, it's just kind of, I mean, I feel like a long time ago, I kind of just like dissociated from like being on a big platform, like. Because I feel like if I really grappled with the fact that like a stadium full of people are looking at what I'm doing at any time, I would like delete everything. That's just, it's just wild. But like, I kind of just like my mind's over here and like platforms over here. I'm like, oh, I just post things and I'm just going to retreat over here to my like, my, my non audience like place, if that makes sense, if I'm making any sense. Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I guess it's just, a, it's a mindset thing. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Um Somebody in the questions here are saying, um, Angel Ferguson, I've been seeing more and more artists moving to Pillowford Social as a new Tumblr and a way to avoid toxicity on Twitter for artists. But I do wonder if you see yourselves moving there as well. Pillowford? Pillowford. I I don't know if that is. Familiar with We're not familiar I, with it. So. No, I... I feel like with pillow fort, I I just I can't I can't learn anything new. Like my breath, my brain's kind of empty right now. I can't, <laughs> I can't learn anything new. Like I can't Bring build it. another following. I just can't do. Yeah. I expect people who do move to pillow fort, like you do your thing, like have mm-hmm. fun. I I'm so ooh, I can't move to another social media. Yeah, this I might as well just. So I'm tired. Yeah, like. Tumblr did us dirty. We went from there to Twitter. <laughs> <That> <laughs> Instagram did us dirty. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, okay. bless, bless anyone who still posts on any artist that's still posting on Tumblr. Like you're dedicated. I stopped posting yeah. on Tumblr like I think two years ago or something because it was just like too much work. I have to like I already I'm already posting on Instagram and Twitter, and it's like Tumblr too. Like oh, I like going wow. on Tumblr to view other things, but to post my own work on Tumblr it just seems like 
a lot of work so I just don't yeah no I think we had like something amazing with Tumblr because I do post but once in a month so I just go Uh there and then I gather everything that I've posted on Instagram and Twitter already and I just like dump it on them (laughs) but when I but when I do go there I still see posts that I've posted like two years ago still circulating so yeah I feel like that's something amazing with that platform yeah. With Twitter, you post today, t- the next day, it's over. Yeah, 30 <laughs> yeah. minutes, it's gone. It's very- like, mass consumption. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. I It's just, like, I, I'm i thinking about, like, my old Tumblr days. Like, I was just posting. I think I was just mostly, just like, posting art, you know? I was like, mm-hmm. all right, here's my art, and I'm gone. Like, I don't want to talk to you all. But, <laughs> like, but now with like Twitter, that. I'm like... Wait a second. I don't like how you're doing this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something. Like I don't like I don't like racism. So I'm gonna say I don't like racism on Twitter. Like, so And that's I, a controversial point and you end up getting yeah. into like a Twitter fight, like, oh you know y'all want to die on this hill today. <laughs> oh Jesus, but the good Tumblr days. We have a lot of Tumblr fans in the chat. Oh, but let's see some Bless you all. <laughs> let's leave social media chat for a little bit and now let's let's uh let's talk about the industry nila has mm-hmm. an interesting question um, um what steps do you want to see executives and leaders in these art industries like animation and comics what steps do you m- want to see them take to make spaces more inclusive and safe for black artists a question for any of you I would say hiring more black leadership Um, because it's like one thing like let's say you hire like I don't know like a black like black artist but I feel like sometimes in like let's say like someone maybe they draw something that's kind of like oh and you guys will might voice your opinion Um, and I feel like in the end, sometimes leadership is the one that will call the final shots and be like, mm-hmm. you know, well, I want this in or I don't. I, I, I just think that um, not only should you hire black artists, but you should also hire black leadership, especially black mm-hmm. showrunners. I can't really think of it that many, yes. like on my hand, like I would love like a female black showrunner just to work in that environment and not have to worry about just like extra stuff on top of the work um mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. honestly like you just needs to be more because like you know you could say like oh well there's just one person and it's like yeah that's great but there should be more just mm-hmm. like how there's a lot of white male showrunners and producers and stuff and there's a lot of like and there's even like you know white female showrunners and producers and stuff it's like there's there's room for more yeah 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 I definitely definitely agree with art of that and like it's just very hard because it's not a lot of black artists in the industry so there's not a lot of black like you know not a lot of people can mobilize they can't move up because it's just so less of us you know and it seems that it's very like it's such a big problem you know it's I don't know it's because it's like, yeah, we need like more black showrunners. Like we, I think that's just, we need more black execs. We need black showrunners, we need black producers. But they need, again, they need to hire more and more black people because it's like a larger pool. Because I think one excuse, a lot of people, like we don't want to hire a lot of um, execs or like showrunners because they don't have the experience. How are we going to get experience if you don't hire us? Like, right. it's so frustrating. It's very, I think that's like such a frustrating part because it's like, it's just, it's, it's a systematic issue, you know, like there's not a lot of black execs because not a lot of black artists, a lot, a lot of black people in the industry to be introduced, you know, so it's like, how can we- Give us a chance. Yeah, like, give us a chance. Have, like, a, they'll have like, like no offense, they'll have, like a white guy kind of bumble in and be like, you know, he's the showrunner and he might not have specific animation experience, but you know, they'll give him a chance. Like, why can't you extend the same to us? Why do we have to be perfect? Yeah. to be able to have a position yeah like as long as we have a vision like you know so yeah what you said like you see um like you said like a white guy that probably hasn't even worked in animation and he's still brought in to like show run something in animation 
or like an animated movie, but you know, maybe a black direct art director or something would not be given that kind of chance. So yeah, it's like you have to have five qualifications more than your count your white counterparts in order to be considered for those kind of positions. Mm. Yeah. And also like depending on the media that's being worked on, um, there might be something that the showrunner or like people working on the show might overlook. And I feel like um, if like, how do I phrase this? So like if you're working on something, you might put something in your media that might kind of have some weird implications. And like if one of a person on your team notices, I feel like it's okay to listen. Like if they have a suggestion, because you might, I mean, you might not know, right? Because sometimes you just live outside that experience and it takes somebody who is um, occupying a different space than you to kind of like say, hey, I think that might be a little weird. You want to like, can we like rework this? Maybe like put this a little bit like through some more revision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just to avoid yeah. like making like pretty big mistakes. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like yeah. the advantage of having a diverse team because different ha people have different experiences that they can pull from and like kind of like be a check and balance, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, just like piggyback on that too. Like, it's very hard if you're like the only black person on the crew, as opposed to like having mm -hmm. like multiple black people on the crew. Like, because if I'm like, if I see something like, like, oh, that's kind of racist, but it's like, oh, I can't tell this to anyone because I don't seem like I'm that crazy black person on the crew. But yeah, if you have like, you're too sensitive people, or something. Yeah, because like, you know, if you if you have another black person or like a multiple black people in the room and you see something that's like, everyone looks at each other like, like a knowing stare like, <laughs> I love like, like, like <laughs> so it's like, like it's, um <laughs> like it's just like you if you have like a lot of black people in one area it's like well what if something's happening especially like in like an episode or just in general like even like making like people making like black characters and mm -hmm. sometimes the melanin is not there even though you have the choice, but you choose the less melanated character, like, why is that the reason, you know? So it's nice to have people who are just not just like Black, just in general, like having people reflect the show, you know, like having different people in different backgrounds, like to basically amplify and make these character experience authentic as they can be, you know? Thank you, guys. That's great. I think you have a lot of support from the chat uh, echoing your same thoughts about, you know, it being the token black person on the crew and, and the challenges that that brings. Um, Lisa Liu wants to know, it's an interesting question. How do you address performative action only coming to you to hear your opinions on black trauma? Performative action, something we see a lot now um, post George Floyd. I can start off with that as someone that's Nigerian and no Black American and sometimes people feel more comfortable, you know, coming to me <laughs> for like, um, I, how do I say it? For like advice regarding stuff. And then I have to be like, you know, I'm not a Black American woman. And so you bringing this specific topic towards me is not something I can really speak on. So the first thing is don't only look to like one black person for like mm. an opinion for mm -hmm. stuff like that. Don't look to only one black person for advice. And also if it's a specific issue, try to get that, like um, try to talk to someone that is probably more connected to that specific issue. If you wanna talk about Nigerian issues or something, you want advice regarding that, yeah, come to me, but like, if you want to talk about American issues, I've only been here for four years. I don't know much about it. I haven't like lived the experience of living in a community that's so racist. So I wouldn't be able to talk much about that. So I think it's very good to go and like speak to different black people. You know, we're not a monolith. Different people have lived different experiences. Yeah. Yeah. I think like Same. yeah. Oh, mean, are you going? Uh, do you have anything? Like, oh no, I said I same. Wanna... Like I agree. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like you can go. <laughs> oh, I I was just going to say like I think for me is that's why I was just like when the whole George Floyd thing and like John Wall Black was kind of initiated kind of by force because I I and like that felt like personally I put a lot of pressure on me because I was like oh shit like now I have to. <laughs> 
up like directly while dealing with this traumatic event you know yeah um, it, it was it's a lot and that's but it's also kind of like where were you guys at four years ago when this was not like nothing traumatic was happening in the black community like it's like i we of course like appreciate the support but it's like can you have to continue it or else it's going to seem perform- performative like and we have proven things have been very performative um like a lot of that's why i had to do like i'm still doing the survey where like if you have got an opportunity like and it follow through like you have to like like i need to like connect this data because it's like a lot of people have voice up like that like have lost i have lost opportunities because of just like people not following up and just like not pulling through with them you know so it's like I think having holding these like holding allies and studios and like like people hiring accountable for like okay you said you want more black artists well you need to say that every single day not when black trauma is happening you know and I think that's why like that's why I'm like do like that's why we're doing drama on black like twice a year like since 2017 mm-hmm. we're doing it twice a year like no matter what like and we're doing it, and like it's scheduled so it's like you have like it's just like I, I don't know it's just very frustrating but it's also like I know like I like every time I like we voice like this concern a lot of people like well we have to like take this opportunity like we have to take this guilt you know um and just like take this opportunity when you came. It's also just like, it's very bittersweet. Mm-hmm. Thank you, April. An anonymous attendee is saying, I have experienced racism at major animation studios, bitching while black story, or sorry, bitching my black story. I've also felt shunned by black people within the industry as well, not giving support to black artists that they're trying to get in. What is your opinion on Blacks who are trying to get in the industry who get slammed twice? So I guess- You mean like they're, they experience racism from like non-Black people and like get pushback from Black people? That's correct. That's correct. Uh, hmm. I guess, you know, mild racism from the Black community as, I guess this person has experienced just very un- unsupportive black community in that is in the industry as they're trying to get in. I guess it's one of those, um, there's only so, so much pie to go around f- philosophy and people get greedy once they have a piece of pie. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like, like gatekeeping. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like with that, like, I wouldn't really think of it's like, or, race like I, I don't think black people can be racist to each other I think it's just a personality thing maybe or I don't know if they're basing it on one situation you know sometimes you just don't vibe with certain people or yeah. but I think the more of us that are in the industry the more different personalities and groups of friends and stuff yeah mm-hmm. thank you yeah. Maddie, since you're speaking, I do have a question for you from the audience. You mentioned that you were self-taught. Do you have any advice on building a portfolio without being able to use student work or commissioned work? Yeah. Um, so I, I kind of, um, I had like a mentor, like um, someone who was working in the industry who um, kind of like really helped guide me with like, you know, this is what, you can find this information on Twitter now too. Um, Like, you know, what are we looking for in a portfolio and stuff? I would say draw something because when I originally started, I kind of was like, okay, this is what I'm expected to draw. I got to draw this or I have to make this kind of art. And I I don't know. I feel like for me personally, I'm kind of at a point in my life where I'm just like, I want to draw what I want sort of. So I would say find a project of your OCs or anything like that, that you're really passionate about and that you really love, like something that got you into wanting to draw in the first place. And I would say applying kind of like, like treat it like it's your own production in a way. So like depending on what you want. So if you want to be a storyboarder, 
you know, think about those stories that you made of your characters or your favorite um, book or something or movie or, and like redo that. Um, I think it's good to kind of like draw like what you want people to hire you for. Um, and then also just working on your like construction and like kind of like the basics um, like if you're doing character design drawing through learning how to do a turnaround um, yeah thank you cool. thank you thank you oh, um, Elizabeth I have uh, do you have any more questions um because I see like in the comments like maybe some like lighter questions or just like maybe like more like career-based questions yeah I do, I have a bunch of questions and I'm gonna go down each one of them if I may. I, there's questions about Blacktober. How do you guys feel about Blacktober? Great. People are cool. excited, <laughs> let's like, go. Like, have, I like everyone's having fun. <laughs> Great. I mean, I don't have time to do it, but like I'm, I'll be liking and retweeting yeah. things, so. Same, I'm saying, I'm telling myself, I made a list like of six characters. I'm giving myself one day and that's it i mean <laughs> <laughs> like just like october i won't be like yeah now i'm very excited for it and like i'm just excited to see all this art you know yeah. like <laughs> seeing all I'm like wow these well wow, black characters wow i'm, People I'm so are excited going off like it hasn't even started and you know the whole timeline mm -hmm. is crazy i know i love it so much <laughs> Um, how do you feel that studios prefer certain types of Black characters to be part of your stories? In your experiences, have studios re rebuked story ideas or character development of a Black character because you wanted the character to be more Black? Hmm. <laughs> I, I, think, I think for that, I... Um, I kind of... I know because I'm like a color stylist, I kind of have like um charge with like you know who's like gonna be like basically like I have like power to like who make any character and stuff and usually like if I use like I think that's why color style is so powerful because like you can basically set the tone and stuff and I know for like when I'm particularly drawing like or coloring like black characters like, I kind of don't like what is that? but I kind of just don't give them room to like Basically, I kind of don't give them room to whitewash the characters. Like, I'll give them options, but I use like different tones of like dark skin. You know, if I attend, if I attend this character to be dark skin, they're gonna be dark skin. You know, if I attend care to be light skin, they're gonna be light skin. You know, so it's like I I try to like make it. I, I don't want I don't want that on me. Be like, oh, this person is whitewashed. Like, no, that's not gonna happen if I'm gonna color a character. No, that's smart. Yeah. 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 What kinds uh, what kinds of genres, themes, topics, and stories do you think there is a glaring absence of because of lack of black people in leadership and concept development? Stevens McDowell wants to know. Science fiction, holy shit. Yeah. Like I keep thinking about like Afrofuturism is such like a like I would love to see more animation that delves into that. Yeah. Like yeah. or just black people in sci-fi in general. So I'm just like sci-fi yeah. is kind of the one genre, like, yeah, genre where like you can do whatever you want like it's you can imagine so much for yourself like in a society that like doesn't exist or it's like super high concept or like kind of more contemporary and it's like there's so much room for diversity there because it's literally like out it's like I mean uh, like fantasy is like that too but sci-fi I feel like you can break conventions and like kind of do like subversive shit and it's like where are the black people in my sci-fi? I want to see more like black led sci-fi. <laughs> like yeah. even from like a young age, I would always like be like, man, it'd be really cool if I had like a black sci-fi show or like more black sci-fi shows. Yes, mm -hmm. fantasy. I definitely agree. Like if you follow, if you see my art, you know, I draw black yeah. fairies and black princesses. I mm -hmm. want that. Like I want dark skinned girls to be soft in pink and covered in flowers yeah. and like riding into the sunset with their prince, <laughs> you know, like our princess. Like I just want them to be in a cute story and like have a happy ever after. Just like, yeah. Like, yeah. Been yeah. <laughs> people's anxieties like mental health and stuff also relationships too and just like how it relates to like your career and just like how things affect you on your day-to-day -day basis and stuff and like 
I think just like I love interpersonal stories you know as opposed to just like things outside of like things you can't control you know but yeah I think I'm I hopefully like we see more than American animation um a lot more young adult stuff you know that's not always so like gritty but also just like this very like Mm -hmm. like that's like something you can relate to you know yeah so I don't know if you guys have mentioned it, uh, but we have a few people asking if there is a Join Well Black Discord, or if you know of any um, Discord channels for Black or people um, of color or artists. Black and animated. Black and animated. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a podcast too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a podcast also well. Black Card too. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you have it, Brianna. You can check that out. Brianna Sykes was wondering. Mm -hmm. And um, what sort of, uh, Justin Owens, what sort of positive changes are you hoping to see within the animation industry in the near term? I know we want the utopia, but what do you see in the, what would you like to see in the near term, like quickly, what changes? Uh, the remote stuff has been amazing. I fucking love this remote situation. Like, mm-hmm. I also I like working mm-hmm. people in person, but just the ability to just kind of work from wherever you are, like, opens up so many opportunities for people who can't, like, move to L.A. Because, like, L.A. is fucking expensive. Like, and it, it kind of, like, allows people to, like, reach... It kind of, like... Wait, it lets studios, like, reach out to people who, like, might not be able to, like... Um, I don't know, like, be where they are at that time at that like exact moment um granted there is some like time zone things that kind of like make it a little bit like weird but yeah remote work is just amazing Mm -hmm. yeah thank you uh we did have a few people ask us um those of you who are in la or in burbank if that has made a difference for you and if you have noticed just more opportunities or more things on your radar because you're closer? I think, yeah, kind of. Do you want to go on to that, Mary? Because you've been Uh, living now as long than I have. I think it's like, it's easier to find like, like people who, let's say they work at a studio and they're like, oh, we're short on, like we need like last minute, we are looking for like color designers or Mm -hmm. a border. And I feel like it's a little easier to, I guess, make those connections in person with other animators. And like, you'll just be hanging out with your friend and they'll be like, oh, hey, do you have anything you're doing right now? Can you like help out or, you know, that kind of thing. So I think it has that kind of um, like Mm -hmm. effect. Um, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. LA is so expensive though. Yeah. I like, act, like, it's so fun because I actually moved to LA during quarantine and stuff. And like, oh, my God. oh yeah. <laughs> but honestly, I, because I like been going to, I've been mean, like living in LA for the summer for the past four years and stuff. And I, I think generally I love LA because I don't love living in Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's why I like was like, yes, I'm moving here no matter what. But I think for me, this I noticed that there's a lot more. I have gotten like more secure opportunities. I think I think that makes I think hopefully that makes sense. Like more secured opportunities because I'm in LA and I have been like just be transparent, like a, a bit of a pay raise because like mm-hmm. and like correct anyone who's like actually part of the union like can correct me. But like I'm like a freelancer, but um. From what I experienced, it's like uh, because if you live in like LA, they kind of have to sue your union, so they have to pay mm-hmm. fair wages. Um, and like at least give you 40 hours, not like 40 hours, but like at least a fair wage as a freelancer and stuff. So it's like I think that's one big advantage of living in LA, even if you're not working at a union job or like as a freelance, it's like you have because it's like LA is, is expensive, it's very expensive, so it's like you it's a able to like have that as an advantage too, and like also too, there's such a big network here 
um of artists that's like really supportive and it's like it's nice to like it's also really fun to like ha like have relatable people because like if the if earthquake happens like oh my god it's an earthquake and everyone's talking about it you know so it's like just like I mean, it's just I I really like LA because it's like a community too but I think if you're comfortable where you are at um as an artist um I and it's like if you if that's a place you afford I think that's why it's important that the animation industry expands beyond LA because mm -hmm. LA again it's a lot of people are here you know and unfortunately there's a big gen gentrification problem here yeah. and because yes. a lot of people are move yeah people yes. are moving here <laughs> just for an opportunity but you're actually kind of forcing other people out yeah so I think like I think even I gotta keep that in mind because I'm not local here like keep that in mind like respecting where you are at um mm -hmm. especially the locals so it's a bit those like gas a, prices yeah those gas prices Oof. But like, I don't drive, texas so. gas prices be like a dollar 19 and i'm just like y'all i don't want to leave i don't like it <laughs> but like you know gas is expensive <laughs> mm -mm. oh god Oof. and if you don't drive the transportation oh, i don't drive <laughs> i take it worse uh, i wish i didn't have to drive god <laughs> Like ha commuting here is a bit of a hassle because um, mm -hmm. I used to commute all the time for my internship. Such a hassle, and I had I basically mm -hmm. just had to do like Ubers and Lyfts, but even those add up, you know. Um, mm -hmm. That's why if you do move to LA, try to find um, a, like an area where it's close to you, like as close as you can be. Like you don't want to be living in like a, like LAX and trying to commute to Burbank with no car because that. Oof, you will not. <laughs> it's not worth it. Traffic. It's good to move out. Yeah, it's traffic's awful. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lots of challenges in LA, but lots of connections for sure. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, once we go back to having events, it's the place where we spend the most time mm -hmm. because of all the tree shows and shows. Um, will you consider making Drawing While Black listing a gallery? with clickable um, art samples. Um, anonymous attendees wondering if they a more visual directory. Yes, actually. So I have to send out this email. I'm so sorry, y'all. But I have updated the form where you can upload art for your um, listing. So now it's going to be more visual. So I'll send that out soon where like you can update your listing where you can just upload like an art, an art piece or two. And, and because art Airtable is really great, there's a gal gallery mode where if you click on it, you see the art as like the headshot. Um, I think like moving forward, there are, like maybe like a couple of years, I don't, want, I don't know, but I do want to make a website for the directory. Um, but um, Airtable has been working pretty okay, but I think if I once I find the time oh like just like that time management like I do want to like move it to like a bigger website or, like a bigger platform mm -hmm. that would be so cool to see the yeah having it like that because mm -hmm. also too if I do like a website I could like possibly put like job postings and like news updates but <laughs> I would probably would yeah. need like a team and I want to compensate people for that you know yeah we have a few students here asking for advice while they build their portfolio. Um, specifically one here for color styling, but one, can, one of you can address the color styling advice and then others address just building a portfolio as a young black artist. What do you suggest? Like, I can answer the building the portfolio. Like, honestly, like a lot of times I feel like making your own narrative like making like a project or something will like help you do a lot like a lot so like my advice to anybody who's like wanting to build a portfolio is like well depending on what you want to do so for example this dev right so think of like a story it doesn't even have to be like super complex or like good um but like think of a story design some characters think about where they live think about like what their relationships to other characters are think about like what they do and already you have like reasons to draw like for me i feel like um drawing is kind of like I need a reason to do it like I need a reason to do something like make a character like make a make a background and if I don't have a reason for it I'm more inclined to just not do anything so making a narrative literally helps me like be productive and like make and have fun while also studying too because you can like take out 
uh, multiple things at once while you're building a portfolio, which is like really great when you're a student and don't have a lot of time to kind of like devote to different things. Um, you can kind of do a lot with a few, a uh, little amount of time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. A question for Umaima. How are you finding yeah. the art and animation scene in Atlanta? Are you feeling that you're finding good opportunities there? We have Sarian, who's also an Atlanta-based artist. Ooh, okay. <laughs> um, so the Atlanta animation industry, I feel like is very different from LA. Like in LA, it feels much more organized. Like, you know, it's like, that's where the whole thing happens. And then in Atlanta is like, you have to wait for a position to be available and you probably like have that freelance job for maybe a few months and then that's it you have to some people wait a year they have to go back and like look for other jobs before they can go back into animation again and then there have been situation of people being let go so it is really rough and that's why a lot of like um artists in atlanta even me personally like maybe eventually I would probably have to move to LA because it just feels like there's more, you know, there's a more standing there. People, they actually know what they're going. And then they have the a union, which people do not have here in Atlanta. And that affects the wages animation artists here get. So, I mean, <laughs> and I'm not trying to, you know, just like bash on it or anything because yeah. there are so many like amazing small studios, especially if you're coming out from, um, school i'm just graduating scad right now so mm -hmm. i can easily just go to like one of these studios around me like bento box and stuff i just feel like there's so much that can be done to make it better for people that are working there you know just mm -hmm. to make it that they don't have to wish oh yeah i'm gonna pack my bags and just move to the west coast yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank you um for all of you, are there any plans to expand the Drawing While Back community in the future? And if so, what are those plans? Well, um, so right now I'm trying to, I do want to expand as much as I can um, with like my limitations. Um, again, I like talked about like wanting to do like a website and stuff and just like also I think just general doing more events for Drawing While Black too, um, collaborating with like other like Black um all right, obviously, it's like black and animated, like they have been such a great support. I love y'all so much, but um, um, just like, just in, like even connecting with like the, like with animation with the union or just like, just like having like a better, very like support group with like other groups would be really great. Um, yeah, just like having, just like having more accessibility to like events like Lightbox, but also like maybe like, other conventions where we also could do like panels like these, you know, just like spreading that awareness. Like I like I really do want to have like a team one day where I can actually like pay people. I think that's what's stopping me from having a team. So I like I want to come and save the money. I just graduate college, I need money. <laughs> but, but I I think just like having just like the I think with the support we've been getting from like not only from individuals, also studios too, like that has helped numerously like that's why drama Black keeps on growing just like having that continuous support you know so like one day drama Black, Black might be like beyond just a hashtag it could just be like so much more it's a way it's a lot but just like I'm very optimistic with how it's growing each and each year you know yeah like oh, what would you guys want to see out of drama Black I, I love suggestions we are inviting everybody that's watching this session to head to Twitter or to Instagram and, and let everybody here know, um, especially Abel since she's like the hub, but there's all of the uh, Instagram handles of the rest of the artists joining us so you can send them suggestions because that's how our community grows. Abel, do you want to uh, talk about your contest that you have right now if you want to invite people to participate? Yeah, so I, um, yesterday I posted on my Twitter um, for a Wake Home One contest slash grant. I, I kind of like, don't want people to think that you have to draw for anything, but like, yeah, just basically it's like an application where you fill it out, um, saying like who you are and just like, 
tell them about your art and also like how would a way come one um, benefit your practice and just like um and then um the contest ends um September 18th 11 59 p.m pacific time um and then we and some judges will look at the applications we're not gonna look at names and like we're gonna um, I think with the contest I want to look at the most urgent need and then like trying to like narrow it down based off like possible portfolios is just like see how like how we can make this how people who who would be like the best fit for getting one and like this is not going to be the only contest so like if you apply for this one um there might be future contests you don't have to apply again so like I think I'm I think I'm going to try and like try to do this like with every drama on black we'll see how it goes but I I definitely don't this is not just like a one-time opportunity like there's going to be most opportunities to like get get something like because like I think uh I think one thing that's told by a lot of black artists or like other just artists black, like they don't have the tools to continue their practice. And I just want to be able to like provide tools to people who need them, you know. Thank you, Abel. Yes, you told me that it was not a contest. You do not have to submit any sort of artwork. Um, and just go to Abel's Twitter to read more about it and she'll be sharing more information. They'll be sharing more information throughout the day. Uh, we invite everybody to support Drawing Well Black, to spread the word, to uh, light, uh, point the radar to this hashtag. We certainly at Wacom are very proud to spend uh, time with you guys today. We thank you so much. We're, I'm getting ready to wrap up because it's 12.18 uh, uh, here in the Pacific and we're going to be preparing for our next session. But I want you to thank each one of you for taking your time um, to speak about a very important uh, costs and uh, also thank you for doing all the hard work. I know it's very time consuming, but I can see all the love uh, coming out of your community. That's how you caught our attention and that's how I know you'll continue to grow uh, your community. Thank you so much for everybody um, who joined us. I'm going to ask you guys if you have any parting words or any last uh, messages you want to send out to your community, please, um, please share. Um keep drawing it's fun if i mean have fun like it's what drawing's about like you're not having fun like what's the point mm -hmm. and i'm assuming mm -hmm. a lot of people here are in animation so watch a lot of cartoons that will make you happy please do yeah. that especially lately <laughs> with everything <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. also take care of yourself like take some time just to breathe you know like like it's just like taking care and like self-care will help with a lot, like will go a long way. So it's like important to just step back and just like absorb what's, what's around you. Self-care is definitely important. Thank you 